Alright, um, I'm Callum, Get Your Rock Out, here at Hard Rock Hell Festival with Whips and Lance of the Burning Crows. Hello, how are we all? <laughs> yeah, I'm alright. How, how's the festival been so far? Obviously you were on earlier. Yeah, yeah, we were on about what, 3 o'clock this afternoon? 3, three this afternoon, yeah, it's been, it was awesome. It was great, you could, the room was filling up as we were playing, people singing the songs back to us. It was <laughs> so good set then. Yeah, yeah roll, really yeah. good. I mean, to be fair, it felt like about 10 o'clock in the evening. I'll yeah. yeah. see if it was since about 4 o'clock this morning. Oh. Hence, we look a little bit haggard, so yeah. excuse us here. We had, a, we had a show in Glasgow last night with the choir boys, so we got out early and, and came down here. So, yeah, I, I'm completely confused about what day, time, or anything is. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it was, it was day, man. We got out of the bar about 3 o'clock this morning, back in the van, so about 4 o'clock, so we had about 45 minutes sleep, you know. We kind of got him, we were like, we don't know what's going to happen here. But by the end of the set, man, it was in what, like 700 it was, people? It was genius, it was lovely. Great. It was really, really good. Cool. Has the rest of the tour been as good? I mean, have there been, Amazing. it's been pretty... Every night, you know, yeah. saw that, you know, really cool. And just people always up for it as well, you know, because there's a lot of kind of northern dates. People up north love it as well, you know, which is great. But every show, you know, everyone's going to be really welcoming, because it's always, we're doing this as support bands, you know, yeah. as opposed to a headline tour, like the last one. But everyone's just kind of been like, wow, you know, who are these guys? Is yeah. that a drink? Well, yeah, I, was, I saw you playing earlier, it was very impressive. I mean, the way you kind of got in with the crowd and then you just, I mean, you were at the bar with them like after the show, weren't you? Yeah. It's, it's, it's something we always kind of try to do. So, like, we finish a show, like, and it be on tour or, or a festival, we either hit the bar or generally what we'll do, we'll go and, like, sell our own merch or something. Because we get to meet everyone then and it kind of just... It's hard enough to get people out to see live music as it is. So if pe if you're a bit more personal to it, people will, people kind of really warm to stuff like that. And, it's, and we have a great time. We get to meet everyone that we speak to on Facebook and things like that. You know, we're pretty active on the social media side. So for us, it puts names to faces and things like that. Yeah, it's really cool. Do you find that you're dealing with old fans more who've you know been listening to your EP and so on, or are you finding a lot of new fans are kind of coming into your stuff? You have the old fans who come and see you before, you know, and you have the people that happen to be there, especially on this tour, who are kind of there to see the choir boys, you know. And afterwards, they're like, oh, you never heard of me before, but that was insane. You know? Yeah. And it's just really good, and you kind of get to go out afterwards and meet them all, you know. And you get people there who pre ordered the album, kind of done the pledge music thing, because you can pre order the album, and they're out to that, you know. And just meet everyone, get involved, you know, there's old fans, new fans, people who are not sure, and then they get involved, they love it, you know, it's great. So, and obviously today you played some new material that was, I mean, did you find, did, were you pleased with the reaction to it? I mean, obviously the fans re reacted quite well because it's always a bit risky with new material. Yeah, you know, especially in a festival situation, people want to hear like greatest hits, so don't they, you know. Checking a couple of new ones, but yeah, like you say, the reaction was great. It, it did have a really good, like, good crowd roar after it, which was nice, because I think it was, it was quite, a, it's one of the new ones, it's quite stompy, it's very... It's just really flat out rock and roll kind of stuff that you need. So, and it, you do kind of hear it. It's like, yeah. Are you are you very pleased with the new album and what you've done with it? Yeah, I mean. the tracks are all ready to be recorded because we're doing now. Uh, we're going back to Rockfield Studios in Wales in February. But in the run up, we're doing now. Uh, we're kind of putting in the hands of the fans more than anything, you know. So we're doing it through PledgeMusic.com, and they're kind of paying part for recording the album. So basically, people go on there, they kind of pre-order the album or pledge, which is what's officially called, apparently. And uh, yeah, you need to like pay eight quid, you get the album before anyone else, and you get kind of all the video updates from the tour, like what we're doing now, you get some exclusive tracks. If you want to put a bit more money in the kit, you can, I mean, you can have us come and play in your front room. Yeah, we'll come, we'll come and play yeah. in your front room. You can, you can you can pledge an amount and you can come and spend a week with us in the studio and yeah, shake, your, shake, track, some, yeah. shake your maracas on a track kind of uh, thing. It's so. basically whatever people want to do, you know, people are putting their hard earned money into the album, you know, we'll do it every day. Yeah, because I mean, a couple, I've seen a couple of other artists have started using things like Pledge and there are a couple of other sites. I mean, what kind of prompts you to do that? Is it the fan interaction that you, that it's that idea that you can actually bring the fans into your music more? That's the main thing. I mean, the whole industry has changed, you know. So it used to be the idea of record companies. <laughs> so sorry, my wife did a mistake. There's another band. <laughs> yeah, it used to be, you know, be the record company would go, yeah, here's a load of money. But it doesn't work like that anymore, you know, unfortunately. So now, 
it's kind of a lot of it's down to the bands. You know, unless you're ACDC, you know, you kind of find a different way around it. I guess mean, it's really cool because you still kind of get to do what you want to do, but you involve the people you want to involve from the very, very beginning. You know, I think I think a, I think a big, big part of the proof in that is if you look at you know what Ginger Wildheart done with Five Five Five. I mean. That was a man who was about to kind of chuck it all in and then sort of thought he'd take a chance on it and, you know, he ends up having enough money to do three albums on a pledge. And, you know, it really proves that there are people that still want to be really involved with music out there. It's just a different way of reaching them now. Maybe, maybe the channels of HMV and stuff like that, are, people sort of pick stuff up from there, but it's more... It's a different thing. You can see everything you want without having to leave the house now. So you have to offer something to one get people to leave the house and to to interact with them. And they, you know, we're we're pretty active on the Facebook and that we we pretty much speak directly to our fans and, and people love stuff like that. I know as a a massive music nerd, like I I would love to speak to people. You know, I've I've queued outside venues to to meet people and things. You know, just getting an email or something or, or a comment or a like from from that person, it kind of it, it makes it. It's still sort of fantastical in a way, but it, it makes it touchable to them, and it's it's the way it's the way it's going now. It's it's, it's very evident that pe people control your output now. Is that why you kind of got into it? Do you feel that just that being able to reach out to people and have people screaming your name back at you and just have that involvement? So true, you know. And anyone who says, you know, they don't like to hear people screaming their name back at me, it's me like, right, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, it's... You know. I'm just doing it for me. I mean, it's not, it's not all down to... I mean, the ego trip is, is part of it. I mean, it is, is fucking cool, but... I mean, there is a lot of stuff. I mean, we get... We have the best job in the world. It's you know, we get to... We, we roll around the country, or countries, we play rock and roll, we get to meet people, we get to hang out, and, you know, it's a whole package. Yeah, there's... The money and the <laughs> the money. That's that's that's, that's the one. That's that's the spot. only bit we haven't kind of got a hold of yet. <laughs> Somebody else is hanging on it to, onto it for us. But it's yeah, it's it's, it's, it's a proper blast. You, can, you go out there every night. You're playing songs. You're essentially you writing your own. You know, and you have your know, ex man that's singing back to you. It's a mix people after to have a drink. You know, there's nothing better than that whole world. You get people who love what you do as much as you do. There is no more credit. Um, and you're going. Any big plans for the rest of the tour? I mean, where are you hitting next after the festival? Norwich, Norwich Bedford, Sheffield, and then Leicester with the Choir Boys. Um, they're, they're the next ones, and then then it's Christmas, so we're gonna gorge ourselves and sit on our sofas for a couple of days and then January pick up pre-production again and ready to hit the studio down and running in February. There might be some random shows that <laughs> pop up, you never, it's kind of one of them things you think, oh hey, so I've, got, I've got a week off or something. Yeah, we get really bored though, so like, oh, we got gigs for like two months now, we've got to like, sit in the studio and we really bored. So, like, so I take it you much prefer being out on the road than being in the studio? I've been in the studio as well, it's great, you know, so you know, you get everything together, put it all down, you hear a bang, it's amazing. We, but you can't have a drink with people in the studio, you know, and we really, really love meeting people, getting out there, actually doing that interaction, you know. We're a band that's definitely best kept busy, because left to our own devices, we can cause all sorts of chaos, whereas, you know, when you're on the road, it's like, right, you have to be out of the hotel, it's, you get, it's, it's everything's, your day is kind of mapped out for you. You have got the odd little three hours where we, we tend to run off and hide up somewhere, like, <laughs> let other people do things, but it's, it's quite nice, you know, you know exactly where everything's at. Yeah. It's nice sitting on the sofa wondering, oh, what am I going to do today? It's like, right, I'm going to do some rock and roll. And as you said, you're going back to home almost for your next kind of shows. I mean, are you looking forward to that? It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Norwich, Norwich is a great show for us. You know, Norwich is a strange and wonderful place all at the same time. You know, it's, it's stuck out on a limb. It's not always had the best press when it comes to sort of well the swamp people and you know the whole image of it the, the whole farmer vibe image but it's it's got a really good rock and roll scene we're, we're lucky to have some of our best fans from there people that have supported us from day one in there and you know we get to because they, they follow us on everything we do sort of on twitter and facebook and things like that and then finally we get to bring it home and they get to see it and be part of it so that's always pretty special to us we, we do have some really hardcore die-hard fans in norwich 
And the best bit is, Lance is both my brother and my dad. So uh, that's always good, because I save money on presents. So. Oh, helping the stereotype there. <laughs> Yeah. Unfortunately, we, we, we don't have six fingers, but he's got a gill. Yeah, he's got a gill, web, web fingers. Yeah, he's got web fingers. So, you know, when everything floods, you know, we're going to be laughing because when you lot are drowning, we're going to be paddling our way to the mainland. We're going to be fine. Well, I'm sure that'll be fine. <laughs> So, I mean, are you heading off pretty soon, or are there any bands you're going to stay around and check out while you're here? Um, we're going to go and watch Dan oh, I, I know I'm going to go and watch Dan Beard, yeah, probably Dan sit back, and I intend to drink pretty much my own body weight in wine right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, might have a couple of shandies, you know, blow the froth off a couple. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, obviously you've got the new album coming out in spring next year, I believe it is. Right. So I'm guessing there's going to be a. Have you got a tour plan to follow that, or is that still all up in the air at the moment? It's the album launch. It's going to be. No, it's on May 4th, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, May 4th in our hometown. So there will, there will be a tour to follow the album. Um, the dates are kind of all been penned and penciled at the minute. It's, you know what it's like. It's, it's that initial pre, pre plotting stage. Everything will be finalised in the next three, four weeks. Probably just after Christmas, we'll be able to announce the. The album tour. We want to get back to everywhere we kind of went on our headlines, so everywhere we've been on this tour, you know. Let's make a lot of mega tour, you know, like Turbo Tour kind of thing, you know. Do you look forward to getting back home? I mean, you take you said you're taking a small break over Christmas, or do you find it's a bit weird coming off the road? It's and weird not having to be up every morning. Like, it's, you know, yeah, it's swings clock. and roundabouts. It's kind of nice that I can just sit on the sofa. But then after about a day and a half, you kind of think, oh, so you sort of pick the guitar up and then the next thing you know so I'll ring whips off just started this new song we come around the next thing you know we haven't really got a day off with them start recording songs and things so it's it is nice to be home for a couple of days that's that's kind of as long as it we really needs to be make sure the cat's been fed or something <laughs> <laughs> so it hasn't died in the in the house all right <laughs> cat's dead cat always needs feeding <laughs> <laughs> All right, and on that note, it's been lovely talking to you guys. Thanks, and I wish you luck with the rest of the tour and the album launch next year. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs>